I feel like even though she is this very smart girl, very into reading, classic lit, stuff like that, she also might have picked up Twilight. If you're out on the road. Hey, what's up you guys? It's Avery and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who've never been here before, welcome. Glad you made it. It is officially fall time. I feel like a lot of people are feeling it now. I know that I'm feeling it here in New York and I'm super excited to experience fall in the city. With it being fall time, that means it is also Gilmore Girls time. And if you can seriously look me in the eyes right now and tell me that you haven't been watching Gilmore Girls this autumn, you're lying. I know you're lying because I know that everyone is watching Gilmore Girls right now. At least a lot of people I know are watching the show. I know it's a lot of people's favorite like comfort autumn show because it's fire. I actually just finished watching the show a few days ago because I had started watching it like back in September and so I've pretty much watched the whole thing in the last two months but I thought it would be fun to do a book video today inspired by Go More Girls so I decided I'm going to be doing a challenge to see how many books have I read that Rory Gilmore has also read in the show. So anyone who's not a Gilmore Girls fan, first of all, why are you watching this video? Second of all, if you aren't, that's fine. Start watching it. But Rory's a huge bookworm, and so she reads quite a lot on screen, and she talks about a lot of books. So I found this list. It's on listchallenges.com, and it is 339 books that Rory has been seen reading on screen, which is a lot, I'm aware. So I'm going to go through this, and I am going to talk a little bit about some of the books that I read and some of the books that I haven't but I want to, and just kind of give you my thoughts on some of these books. And at the end, we'll be able to see how Rory Gilmore I am. That doesn't make sense, but you know what I mean. And I know there's going to be a lot that I haven't read. Like, I know it's going to be a very small percentage because she has, like, a very interesting taste in books. And she reads a lot of classics, which I do like classic literature, but I also like to read a lot of modern day books. And me and Rory are not from the same time period. So we'll see. It'll be fun. It doesn't matter. Let's start. So this is the Rory Gilmore reading challenge. Okay, so first off, we are starting with 1984 by George Orwell. I have talked about this book on my channel maybe once or twice. I have only read a few chapters of this and then I was just not a fan, so I stopped reading it. Sorry. I know that that's kind of an uh, unpopular opinion because a lot of people really like that book, but I just couldn't get into it. Maybe one day I'll try it again, but it's not on the top of my list of things I want to give another shot. Next up, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Had to read this in high school, and like many books I had to read in high school, I have no positive feelings towards it, so I don't have much to say about this. I don't remember a lot of it. Anna Karenina, I don't know. I, I would like to read some Russian classic literature, but I'm also deathly afraid of large books, if you know me. If you've been watching my channel, you know that if a book is over, like, 350 pages, I'm like, mm oh don't want to see it don't want it and frank the diary of a young girl i've been wanting to reread this because oh my gosh i'm not even clicking on these <clears throat> i just realized okay wait i have read huckleberry finn and then i have read the diary of Anne frank i read this one in school this is one of those ones you read in school that is actually worth something the art of war pretty sure that's a book that's like thicker than my skull no thanks Atonement by Ian McEwan. I haven't read, but I did watch the movie because everyone talks about this movie and especially the green dress, right? Everyone's like, the green dress? I personally could not get into that movie. I thought it was so long and so boring. Sorry. The Bell Jar is one that's on my TBR. I have it sitting on my bookshelf. I just got it recently and I think I'm going to maybe make a video where I read that book and a few other books. So I'm really wanting to read that one. It's Hopefully very soon. Hopefully by the end of the year. Beowulf did read that in school. I do remember that like we also had to read Grendel, which is, you know, based on the monster. It's a book from the monster's perspective and that I was not a fan of. But I think Beowulf was fine. Like I liked it. Brave New World also read that for school. I don't remember much. I don't think I liked it. Uh, Candide, I read this in college 
and I actually really enjoyed Candide. I thought it was very entertaining. It's also very short, so if you're not into like super long books, especially classic books are hard to read when they're really long. Candide is a good one because it's like very funny and it's a satire about optimistic people, which is, it's good. Catcher in the Rye, I read that one this year because that was one that I never had to read in school, but I know a lot of people did and I kind of like just wanted to read it. And I actually really liked The Catcher in the Rye. I thought that Holden was a very relatable, though problematic protagonist. Like I thought he really embodied teenage angst very well and that he made some good points. And I thought he was a very interesting character, so I really liked The Catcher in the Rye. I feel like that's definitely one where it's like you either love it or you hate it and there's no in between. I started reading The Count of Monte Cristo in middle school. I think it was literally like 6th grade. No, maybe it was 8th grade. No, I think it might have been... No, it was 8th grade. And I was like, yeah guys, I'm reading The Count of Monte Cristo. And one of my teachers like saw that I was reading it and was like, oh, like are you liking it? And I was like, oh, like yeah, I'm reading The Count of Monte Cristo. I probably read a chapter of that book because I did not have the brain capacity to sit down and read something like that. So maybe one day I'll get to it, but I tried. I really tried. Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. I also read this one in high school and that's a good book. It's really interesting kind of the plot twist at the end and it's it was good and I liked it. Divine Comedy also sitting on my shelf, haven't read it yet. Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, read that in high school. It's a good one. Fahrenheit 451, also read that in high school. Fellowship of the Ring, if you guys watch my channel you know that I just read The Hobbit recently for the first time so The Fellowship of the Ring is definitely next. I have it with me on my shelf so I will get to it. Frankenstein, classic classic gothic book so so good really really love frankenstein i think it's a really good accessible classic that a lot of people will enjoy goldilocks and the three bears like i don't know if i've actually technically read this book everyone knows goldilocks and the three bears but i'm like did i actually read that as a child i don't know my mom will have to let me know uh the great gatsby Everyone loves it. She's a classic. Hamlet. I have read Hamlet. I read that earlier this year in a Shakespeare class and I really enjoyed Hamlet which was surprising to me because when I experienced some Shakespeare in high school I remember really liking Macbeth and not caring about Hamlet but then in my Shakespeare class I actually really enjoyed Hamlet more than I enjoyed Macbeth. So obviously you know you don't have to compare the two but those are you know two of his biggest tragedies and I really liked Hamlet. I thought Hamlet was like extremely funny. Haven't read Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, but I have read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone a long time ago. When I was a child, this might sound insane, and it truly is insane, I read the first three Harry Potter books, and then I started the Goblet of Fire, and I only got like half of the way through it, and I just stopped. There's a few series from my childhood where I did that, and I don't know why. Same with Percy Jackson. I read the first Percy Jackson book, and then the second one, I started it, and I just didn't finish the series. So I guess it means like it wasn't super riveting to me, but I do eventually want to reread Harry Potter because like I need to read that series all the way through. Henry the Fourth Part One. This was also a book that was a part of the syllabus for my Shakespeare class earlier this year and I can't lie and say that I read the whole thing because I absolutely hated it. I could not get through it. I thought it was so boring and so I know like the general gist of it and I was able to like understand some of like the humor and the, the p good parts of it but I could not read Henry the fourth part one. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Jane Eyre another one that I haven't read yet but is sitting on my shelf. The Joy Luck Club. I haven't read but I've recently like heard about it and I would like to watch the movie. I mean, I guess I didn't know it was a book actually, so maybe I'll read the book, but the movie has been on my list. Letters to a Young Poet, really, really, really good. I talked about this a lot like last year. I really loved Letters to a Young Poet. It's basically a collection of letters from Rilke to this other poet who was asking him for advice, and he gives him a lot of really good advice about what it's like to be an artist and really just life advice. That's a very good book. It's very short and I think a lot of people could take a lot of good things from it. Lord of the Flies, had to read that in high school. 
much like many other books I had to read in high school. Not a fan. Love Story I haven't read, but I just watched the movie for Love Story recently, and I actually watched that because they talk about, they reference it in Gilmore Girls a lot, and so I I read the, or I watched the movie, and it was good. It was sad, but I enjoyed it. Macbeth read that this past year. It's so much harder to read a Shakespeare play than it is to see it performed. Like every time I've seen Macbeth, a performance of Macbeth, I'm like, wow, that's great. But when I'm just reading it, it's harder. Whereas, I don't know, with Hamlet, for instance, a lot of the wordplay in Hamlet is funny and like really clever. So you can read that and still enjoy it. But I feel like a lot of Macbeth you need to see. And I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking here. The Metamorphosis, I read that slash listened to that on audiobook. The Nanny Diaries, that's actually so funny that Rory was reading that. I mean, good for her. She definitely has diverse taste, but I wouldn't have maybe expected her to be reading The Nanny Diaries. Night, such a good one. Had to read that in high school and that, so good. Night is amazing. I got confused because it looked like Persuasion at first. Northanger Abbey, Read that when I was studying at Oxford last year. Amazing, very, very good. Jane Austen is perfect. Othello, I read for my Shakespeare class. Pride and Prejudice, amazing. I would die for Elizabeth Bennet and Darcy. The Red Tent is also sitting on my shelf. Haven't read that yet. Romeo and Juliet. I mean, I read that in my freshman year of high school and so I obviously thought that that was like super romantic and I was like, ah. Now as an adult, it's like, that story's embarrassing. We really are gonna put a rough guide to Europe on this list. Rory did not read that cover to cover. Well, actually, maybe maybe she would. Daisy Miller, I read that a few months ago, and I really enjoyed Daisy Miller. I have another book by Henry James sitting on my shelf called Washington Square, which I wanna read by him because I really enjoyed his writing style. Plus, being in New York now, I am you know would love to read something set here. Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, amazing. The Shadow of the Wind, I started because I'd heard such great things about it and I really liked it at the beginning, but it got very repetitive the first few chapters and I was kind of sick of reading about this kid who was obsessing about the blind girl. And so I kind of stopped reading it. Whoops. Shane, I haven't read. I didn't even know that it was based on a book, but I recently watched the movie because my grandpa my grandpa is a cowboy and he loves old westerns and he told me that Shane is one of his favorites and so I watched it recently and you know it might not be my favorite genre of movies but I liked it. Siddhartha I had to read in high school. Slaughterhouse Five I read this last semester in one of my classes and I actually really enjoyed Slaughterhouse Five. Kurt Vonnegut is a great writer. I have another book by him on my shelf that I'd like to get to because he was very good. Stuart Little, haven't read the book, but that was a staple in my childhood growing up, the movie. To Kill a Mockingbird, amazing. Okay, that is it. Let's see my results. I've read 8% of the books that Rory Gilmore has read. So 28 out of 339. So that's not super bad. It says I did better than 46% of other users which is pretty good. The average score is 51. Honestly, if I had read all of the books on this list that were sitting on my bookshelf unread, then you could probably tack on quite a few. I talked about a few of them in the video, but there were also a few that I just scrolled past and didn't say anything about that I have sitting on my shelf. So I don't know, maybe I could do this again in a few years and see you know, what I've added to the list. What do I think this list says about Rory Gilmore? First of all, I think it says that the producers wanted her to definitely seem like she was a very, like, studious, smart girl, which she is. But also, like, they could have thrown a few more teen girl books in there. I feel like there's things like that that would have made her feel a little more relatable to girls during that age. And maybe there were things that, like, I didn't pick up on because it was set in a different, you know, decade than I was a teenager for. But, like, it might have been fun to, like, see Rory reading Twilight. Because Twilight came out in 2005. And so that was still when the show was coming out. And are you really telling me you don't think that Rory would pick up 
a book that was so incredibly popular and widespread and be like, hmm, I just wonder what that's about. You know, I feel like even though she is this very smart girl, very into reading classic lit, stuff like that, she also might have picked up Twilight. At least that's what I hope. I know that Lorelai would have picked up Twilight and I just like to hope maybe Rory would have as well. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know what books of these that you've read that you've enjoyed and let me know what your general thoughts about the Gilmore Girls are. I love that show but I mainly love that show for Lorelai and I also mainly love like the first three seasons of that show and really the first season to me is like chef's kiss. The vibes are immaculate. I just really it's the show is better before Rory goes to college. Rory starts being kind of infuriating which I'm not going to talk about because there are countless videos on the internet about how problematic Rory can be. I just think that the first few seasons are kind of the best before all that stuff goes down. But I will say that like Logan is my favorite boyfriend that she has throughout the show so it's kind of like well you have to get to the last half of the show before you can really appreciate Logan. I love it. I love Gilmore Girls. It just makes me happy. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me in the future. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in my next video.